Hi guys, welcome to welcome back to Brianna's life, aka my life. And today we are going to be talking about famous serial killers. I did this last year during Halloween and you guys absolutely loved it. So I thought I'd bring it back. Every Friday, we're going to talk about an infamous, famous serial killer. And today, for episode one, we're going to talk about the Velisca Axe Murder House. Axe murder, eight people hacked to death. And it all happened in the little town of Velisca, Iowa. June 10th, 1912, in Velisca, Iowa, eight people were brutally killed the blunt act end of an axe. No! No! The Moore family was having a lovely evening at church. The children performed like usual, and they were heading home. No one knew that'd be the last time they'd ever see them. The Moore kids ended up having two of their neighbor friends spend the night as they were all hanging out. Little did they know that whether he snuck in or were sitting in some extra storage behind the parents' closet, they would all be dead. There were three suspects at the time, but all were convicted of the murder. Starting off with a local townsman, who actually was a part of the council at the time. Apparently he had claimed that John Moore, the father of the family, was having an affair with his sister, and sucks seeked revenge. They got to the point where they wouldn't be in the same room, same block, they wouldn't stand by each other, they wanted absolutely nothing to do with each other. But then it went around that if he had this intent to murder, why would he murder the children, the wife, and two neighbor kids when it would just be one man that he'd be after? He'd have no reason to go after everybody. And he even admitted that if he was ever going to kill him and even had the intent of revenge, he would have hired a hitman to take the blame for him. So he was immediately kind of removed from the entire idea. Next was the Reverend Kelly. He had some uh, demons himself with some sexual interest in children, would have been at the church that night, and would have had the psychic manner to do what he did, and would have been short, short enough to fit the description of how, he would have been, how they would have been about killing. And some of the evidence definitely leads more and more to the Reverend Kelly. And lastly was the man on the train, a random killer who was just going from town to town using the train system, going to houses, killing them with an axe, and then leaving the scene. Now again, none of these have actually been proven to be true. The Vluska house is actually now an open spot to go and visit to see ghosts and talk to the spirits that once potentially lived there. As you can watch through many different investigative channels, it's definitely a creepy place to go to. Now, there was definitely some interesting facts and interesting evidence given when they were talking about this. How everybody, everybody was hit with the blunt end of the ax, but only the wife of the Moore family was hit with the sharp end, brutally killed to almost unrecognizable and the bodies only were found because of the neighbors, workers, and family noticed that something wasn't right because they usually weren't like this. They weren't sleeping in, they didn't show up for work, the animals they had at the time were not fed, the kids hadn't come out. Something was definitely wrong. And the neighbor noticed that the doors were locked, which wasn't a thing back then. So he called up the brother, opened the door, and that's when they found all of them dead. And it's absolutely sad. Innocent children were caught in the fire of who knows what. Now, a lot of people think that it was Reverend Kelly who did this. He made the most sense. He had some sexual fetishes towards children. He had some definitely closeted demons. He was really short, kind of a little bit on the more um, insane end of things, and definitely could have just gone into a manic spiral and went after these children. 
and why he would then kill neighbor kids and not just one targeted person that he had issues with as it was an issue within himself. One of the strangest things, one of the most hard evidence that really starts to lead more towards Reverend Kelly is the fact that the eldest girl was positioned in a very provocative way. She had been pulled across the bed so her arms went up above her head. Her nightgown was pulled up, her panties were pulled down, and there was a blood handprint on her thigh. Now, there was no actual sign of rape or anything of that kind, but there was seminal fluid found on Anne had gone off to, with a lamp positioned right in view of her, which is beyond the point of serial killer and crazy that is sick on a whole new level. How can you sit there and look at a dead girl's body, especially a child's body, and do that? Moved in the bed, her undergarments removed, and she was uh, sexually posed. Mm. with a lamp at the foot of the bed that is that is so wrong on so many levels now all the windows and mirrors in the house were covered with a white sheet as he doesn't want he didn't want to look at himself probably because he was extremely ashamed of his own acts he did go around the house twice making sure they were definitely dead and how the police at the time knew this was because there was a shoe that got tipped over that was full of blood that was not connected to the initial trail of blood found that would have been dripping off of an axe. Thinking that he came back up and around, tripped over the shoe and knocked it over and the blood then spilled. The house is allegedly still to this day haunted by the tragic killings of these people. There's an entire book called Man on the Train about John Miller, a farmer who was able to fix a broken horse's leg and was going from town to town, killing people with the blunt end of an ax. He fed to the description he would have been out of town during that time and been going around and just happened to find a random victim. But also, Reverend Kelly makes sense if he had sexual demons or just had some sexual fantasies and just had uh, some demons in his own closet and was fighting his own battles and found a family that seemed innocent enough to just be another check off of his list, then it would also make sense. Again, this is one of those kind of killing situations that the story was never ever solved and it's gone into cold casings, but it is absolutely terrifying and disgusting to talk about. Personally, from all the research and videos that I've watched of ghost evidence, I would say that it was Reverend Kelly as it made the most sense. And it would make sense the child's positioning, the intent to kill all, not just one, and the manic behavior of the axe marks around the house. It kind of would just make sense. A Reverend that just lost his mind dealing with his own sexual and personal demons and decided to take the lives of eight people. Hell, what was interesting from researching was that because of the time of how the security systems and uh, police officers worked during investigations, a lot of the neighbors wanted to go in and touch evidence and the, the house and see it for themselves because they felt like they deserved a piece of that, which nowadays would have never flown. But back then, that, that was a thing. I mean, you didn't lock your doors. Your neighbors knew who you were. They'd come in and ask you for a cup of tea. It was normal back then. There wasn't these kind of insane people out there back then, or at least they weren't prevalently told about or known. But. Uh, Pretty sure those neighbors probably started locking their doors after that. More to see if there was any more cases of an axe murderer in Villisca, Iowa. Like, was it the Kel was it Reverend Kelly? And did he come back home and kill more? But no, no. 
nothing from the tracing of the time period that he would have been active which also made me lead to think that it was just an infamous killer who was going town to town using a chain system to satisfy some insane hunger. But we will never know, as all of them have passed away for whatever reasons. We'll never know who really killed those people and what happened to the Moore's family down to the truth. Was John actually with someone's sister? Was this a manic reverend? Was this an infinite serial killer just going town to town doing this? And I hope that the children and the family of that house rest in peace as they just, they went through a very traumatic night. And let me know in the comments below guys, what, who do you think did it? Who do you think went in and killed them? And one of the other big questions of the whole entire case is, where was this man hiding? As the footsteps would have been really, really loud going up the stairs for the parents not to have heard them. But with the train being so close by, could they have just timed the train horn with their walking? Or were they hiding in the closet, waiting and waiting and waiting, building the tension to kill? We'll never know, but I personally think it was Robin Kelly who killed those people. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what's your opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed the first week of Brio Ween and I'll see you guys next time. Until then, lock your doors.